with school. And with school, it's been a big story for the last couple of weeks with immunization records in Seattle Public Schools, the flu. It's like ripping yeah. through our newsroom and all of our families. We've all been hit by it as well. Yeah, so to talk more about that, of course, is Dr. Don. Thank you so much for being back. Great I feel like I've you. had the flu. I, you flu? sound like a little congested. I'm no doctor, but hmm. can we diagnose what does the flu with, look with like for real? Well, influenza-like influenza-like illnesses look sometimes like a regular cold with fevers, sore throats, coughs. But the flu really, you feel like you've been hit like a, with a Mack truck. Is it more like norovirus? Uh, no, no, it's not that. You you just feel like you can't get out of bed. You're extremely fatigued. You may have headaches, body aches. Um, it's not just a sniffle and a little cough. Okay. Not just a and sniffle and a little cough. Okay. So <laughs> we didn't we didn't get snowmageddon this year, but we may be getting flu mageddon. Yeah. Okay. And and people that say, well, I, but I don't need the, it's too late. I don't need the flu shot. I know you've mentioned this before, but I feel like if people are watching and have missed it. What is your as a doctor message to people out there? Well, we're the the flu is is extremely high in Washington State and 32 other states. It's moderate in about 16, 17 other states. The only place that you can escape but that's minimal is New Hampshire and nobody's going there. <laughs> so the answer is that we've already had 10% of the deaths under the age of 18 in the United States right now are in our state. Wow. We've had two mm. kids under the age of four pass away, mm. one child from five to 17 pass away. There's been 30 pediatric deaths and, th and they're mostly from influenza B which affects youngsters zero to four more and over 65, thank you very much. So the only thing that you can do in terms of protection is to get that flu shot. That's your only protection. And it's really not too late because the season is ramping up and we're seeing increased flu-like activity everywhere in the United States. You can't escape it even if you go on vacation somewhere. Yeah. Influenza B strikes young kids and uh, seniors, you said. But what is, so there's influenza A, right? Or, I mean, can you talk about the strains a little bit, I guess, and then how the uh, vaccine, because the vaccine has been doing well with certain strains, right? right? Uh, the vaccine is usually in kids about 60 to 65 percent effective against influenzas. Uh, influenza B, there's two strains, Victoria and Yamamoto. Most of the strains that they're finding in hospitalized patients are now B, Victoria strains, which are much more likely to affect young kids and older elderly people people. Okay. So the answer is that uh, the, the flu vaccine has these strains and basically that's where you want to get your protection because if you do have the flu vaccine and you get the flu, you are much less likely to be hospitalized and very much less likely to die. Yeah. It's not perfect, but then airbags and anti-lock brakes sure. are not perfect in cars either. Right. So, I guess I never really knew all that stuff about the flu. Yeah, you know? and it's just a, a warning. I know you all can't say enough. All right, so now so we've got it's, about... So it's not too late because we're only at week 40, and uh, we, we can go all the way through May. And as I said before, a lot of these cases occur after January the 1st. So if you haven't gotten one, remember that it's out there yeah. and it will affect you if you're nearby. All right, okay. I mean, that's not too late. Now, let's quickly talk about New Year's resolutions. I know New you have Year's a couple, resolution. everyone comes to doctors, I want to do right. this, I want to lose weight, and I want to exercise, and you have a little more easy to bite options right. for families. What are they? So parents always want to make their youngsters smarter, healthier, safer. A great way to do this is pretty simple, it's pretty specific, and it is very much sustainable. You can do it all year. Family dinners. Oh, that's Having easy. a family I mean, that's dinner. Easy. That's hard. That's hard, but I mean, <laughs> that's a good solution. Hours. Having a family dinner is difficult, but gathering around that table without your devices mm -hmm. is a great way to get kids healthier because they're, they, uh, research shows that they will choose healthier foods, they will not overeat, and they will choose a better variety of foods. They will be safer because discussions about bullying in school, cyberbullying, can occur at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. And they will also much, much, much more likely to have an increased vocabulary because they're discussing things with you. And the research shows that kids will use words that are ordinarily not in their vocabulary that they heard from their parents oh, during cool. the dinner yeah. discussion. Turn the TV off, yeah. turn your phones off. All right, it's so a one more thing. We've got a couple what, seconds left. Uh, one more thing is, of course, the very specific Mr. Rogers phenomenon, <laughs> which is the success that he defines as be kind, be kind, be kind. Cultivate a culture of kindness in your house. Use manners, use your pleases and thank yous, and also use that time at the dinners to ask, what did you do today to help someone, rather uh -huh. than how was yeah. school? And 
Have them show you how you're helping someone. Hey, Mrs. Jones just had a baby. What can we do to help her? Can we make her a nice dinner for her and your friend Jimmy, who's, who's the older child? Great so tips. again, cultivate that culture of kindness. It's very easy, it's very specific, and it has lifelong benefits. All right.